Loomis, detective with the Cleveland Police Department and the president of the Cleveland Police Patrolmen's Association. And uh, Steve, before we get to you, I want to kind of set the scene here. We're in Cleveland for the Republican National Convention, and it has been your task to make sure that people coming here at this venue and all throughout the city are safe. Uh, so I first want to get your thoughts on what's happening in Baton Rouge and then how it might affect here. You're with us? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm sorry, yes, ma'am. Um, absolutely heart-wrenching uh, watching what's going on in Baton Rouge right now um, and the reasonings behind it. You know, this all began the Dallas police officers being ambushed and, and murdered. Now in Baton Rouge, it looks like that's the same thing. This all began with a 911 call from an African-American male uh, saying that another African-American male was pointing a gun at him. Those officers responded. That male didn't comply and uh, tragically ended up losing his life, life over that with a gun in his pocket. This is how this began. The President of the United States validated the false narrative and the nonsense that Black Lives Matter and the media are pressing out there to the public, validated it with this very divisive statements, and now we see an escalation. Um, this has got to end. We need some leadership in this country to come forward and put an end to this. I don't care if it's clergy, I don't care who it is, but somebody's got to step up and put an end to this because it's the false narrative and very influential people that are, that are politicizing the false narrative are absolutely insane that we have a president of the United States and a governor of Minnesota making a statement that they made less than one day after those uh, police-involved shootings. And those police-involved shootings, make no mistake, are what absolutely has triggered this, this rash of, of, of senseless murders of law enforcement officers across this country. Um, it, it is reprehensible. And the President of the United States has blood on his hands and it will not be able to come washed off. You know, I, I hear the emotion in your voice. We heard it from the Lieutenant Governor of Texas, Dan Patrick, right after what happened there uh, with five police officers killed in Dallas just a few days ago. And now we have this situation. Uh, I, I want you to talk about the fact that here in Cleveland, uh, Officer Loomis, we have hundreds of police officers coming from all over. Does this change this venue in any way? And, and I want to be careful about the language that we use and, and not take this to an even more incendiary level, but it is what it is. You have a lot of police officers coming here. We have a, we have a lot and of police officers. And they are targets. Officers. Absolutely, they're targets. And, and, and this is proof positive that they're targets. Um, our legal staff right now is drafting a letter to Governor Kasich. We, we are asking for emergency, for him to take emergency action to ban any weapons, open carry weapons, um, in Cuyahoga County at this point for the next week. Because anybody that's going to have an open carry weapon is going to be treated and looked at in a hostile type environment. In this environment where police officers are being ambushed and murdered, anybody that has an open carry gun, we are going to look at, and we are going to look at very, very hard. And uh, Governor Kasich needs to step up and, and seize the moment and take care of this issue um, with, with some type of uh, uh, order or whatever he needs to do uh, to, to mm -hmm. outlaw or ban open carry uh, weapons here. Um, I don't know what the details of Baton Rouge are, but I can tell you and assure you that anybody having a, a weapon on their arm or a weapon swung over their shoulder is going to be looked at in a much, much different way. Um, than we would normally look at, given the circumstances and, and, and what this country is going through. How the hell did we ever become the bad guys in this in this country? I cannot imagine how we got there. It's, it's the irresponsible reporting of the media, and it's the irresponsible statements of people that are credible, like the President of the United States, like celebrities. If you're blessed with celebrity, and you're blessed with talent, then use that. Use those, uh, uh, that celebrity for good and not evil. And, and what I hear you. We have actors out there spewing venom. We have uh, singers, songwriters spewing venom. We have athletes up here in Cleveland. We had an athlete uh, uh, that, that did something, you know, that he since has apologized for, so I'm not, I don't want to go down that road with him. But use your, mm -hmm. use your power. We have to come together on this. So we, yeah. every corner of this country well, it's interesting. To come together.
it, it's interesting because this then begins to step into the ground of politics when you talk talk about the Second Amendment rights and, and banning open carry in a state where it is the law, uh, even Absolutely. if it's for you know particular time of, uh, of a period of time throughout this. Uh, so that will be at that level. You talk about the governor. That will be a political and a, a public safety issue to kind of toggle back and forth with. And what you're asking is that they actually begin that dance and begin to talk about it. Before I let you go, I, I want to talk about securing a venue knowing that police are targets and and not just any venue but you know it's our democracy on display for the world we are blessed to have police officers come and and give their time and energy and expertise to keep all of us safe here it looks much like a military installation right now i mean i saw the fortification even before this happened as i arrived at the venues this morning in downtown cleveland you're from here you police here your challenge now going forward well, that is a challenge going forward. History has shown us that we have to fortify the city if we don't want it to be trashed by a bunch of people that have no, no business being here, uh, breaking our stuff and throwing rocks at us and now murdering us. Um, you know, we have history has shown the policies and the procedures that, that we're employing here in Cleveland and probably in Philadelphia next week um, uh, are written in the blood of our brothers and sisters uh, are written in lessons learned uh, and historically at these RMCs and these EMTs. And, and this is a, an absolute uh, tragedy that, that this is a state of affairs in the United States of America where the police officers are the enemies, and they're the enemies again because uh, a four-time convicted felon who's got a gun in his pocket didn't comply with the police officers of that route. And the President of the United States had very divisive uh, words to say about that, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it is an absolute travesty, and, and I can't imagine uh, a worst case scenario for men and women. I'm going to have 600 police police officers out here uh, at the RNC. I We're know. We're going to have another 2,300 uh, officers that are coming in from uh, all over the country to help us with this. This is a great. This is a great country. This is the only place in the world where you can come and you can say what it is that you want to say. And we defend the Second Amendment, and we defend the Constitution, and the rights of people to be able to stay freely say whatever it is that they want to say. And let me tell you something. The new Black Panther Party and the, the Black Lives Matter movement that were down protesting from the 3rd District here in Cleveland last night, um, they weren't saying very nice things. And they were saying things that were insightful, and they were saying things that were very, actually very threatening um, uh, about what they want to do to police officers and taking over the district and everything else. Um, uh, you know, so I don't want to hear this peaceful protest nonsense either. Um, there's mm. nothing peaceful about that. You cannot in this country you know, that, go that's into a, a theater, you can't go into a theater and scream fire. You cannot do when that there is not against one. the law. Right. You know, it's interesting. Uh, we have a judge who's going to be on board with us in just a moment, and Detective mm -hmm. Loomis, I'll, I'll ask her about that. But for right now, to get your perspective on what it feels like to be part of, if you will, the hunted. I mean, this was yet another ambush on police officers. Thank you for taking the time today uh, to give us your perspective on this. And you have a big job ahead of you. And I just want to say thank do. you for what you're doing. And all of those hundreds of police that. officers who are coming out, absolutely praying for you guys. Uh, thank you for your time. I want to bring in board now someone who I took